Hi, hi, dear community. I am Catherine, former CEO and board member, and I am on a mission to get more corporate women into the C-suite and beyond. I'm going to start this new format, and please let me know if it was of value to you. Also mention, please, if you looked at it from an employer or employee perspective, because it is going to help me on how I shape and craft the videos. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. It is going to help spread my word to the corporate women out in this world. I will choose one topic at a time and look at it from an employer and employee perspective. Everything I share in this video is neither sponsored nor is there any affiliation. Today, I start talking about a book which has become my bedside reference book. It is Sally Helgensons and Marshall Goldsmith's book, How Women Rise, Break the 12 Habits Holding You Back. I think it is a must-have and a must-read book for any working woman. Let me talk about part one of the book, which is titled On Being Stuck. The essence of this part is extremely relevant, in my opinion. At least it was for me, because the authors highlight so well what is holding us back. Later in this video, I will, I'm going to approach the subject from an employer and female employee perspective. It is really interesting to see what is holding us back in our career evolution, and it makes perfectly sense. The authors have noticed our inability to see what is keeping us back as women because we don't perceive it as such, which isn't good at all, the famous blind spots, right? What are these behaviors, these attitudes, which are or can be detrimental to for us? First, women prefer to place great value on the quality of their lives at work. Then they place great value on the impact of their contribution. Then also on that time at work, which is normal when you have kids. That is powerful because it means we are more caring and enjoying relationships with co-workers, colleagues, peers, and clients. In other words, women tend to value more the relationship part through their contributions. Furthermore, Women are ensuring that their work makes a positive difference in the world. Here's one quote which surprised me a lot. Even if I agree with it, I never thought so clearly about it, meaning in these terms. The quote is, when making promotion considerations, women tend to be evaluated based on their contributions while men are evaluated based on their potential. And it makes perfect sense. It is so true, especially when leadership teams are reviewing the talent grids. This comment surprised me because I realized that this is definitely an area of potential blind spot for so many leadership teams. Let's have a look at this statement from an employer perspective. When we evaluate women based on their contribution, on their results, if these women generate high results, we are still evaluating them on their next contributions and not on their potential. Still, when I look back at employee performance evaluations, we were indeed approaching the talent assessment from a, let me call it a more masculine energy. Let's look at the performance matrix. The idea of the matrix is that you are in or you should move towards the upper right side of the matrix. Just keep in mind, depending on the new aspects of, or new aspects of your career or Role, you won't be able to be in this part of the matrix all the time. You will be moving within this grid depending on your responsibilities and roles. Basically, if we look at the potential axis, we have the inconsistent player and the potential gems. And on the performance axis, the average performance and the solid performance. So based on the others, you as a woman, you do not want to be in the solid performer square, at least if you do not want to be evaluated 
evaluated for your contributions only. Because we are punishing ourselves, we women, right? Even if we get compliments for the results we generate from our leadership, this is clearly a trap. For you as a leader, I would encourage you to bring this fact or perception to the attention of women. It is a responsibility now that this distinction was made so clearly by the authors. And I think we cannot highlight it enough. So now let's have a look at the female employee perspective. I think it is clear that women don't see that their potential is considered being low when in fact they care so much for the for the impact their contribution is going to generate. Men are smart. They usually climb onto the train of potentiality as quickly as possible to be recognized as a potential. Okay, I, I don't want to go dive into in, in more depth here. So the strategy of any female employee irrelevant of their seniority is to be considered as a high potential from now on, or at least as a core player. So if you're looking to change or to move forward in your careers, I want you to look at the talent matrix and to think about where you are right now. And if you want to deepen this topic and elevate your career, also consider my course where I approach the career tactics from a practitioner and employer perspective too, and where I share openly what I did good and what not so good in my own career progression. The framework I developed is called RISE, which stands for recognize, initiate, serve, and embrace your career journey under your terms. The link is below. I think it isn't solely about changing habits as a woman, even if it's important. It's also about thinking, what are the tactics you can put in place to move higher on the potential scale? Because it is also really about that. And if you want to drive your career under your terms, it is important that you know all the different levers you have so that you can move forward in the way which is important to you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this first video. Thank you.